Good morning, everybody, again. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Library Talk and Everything Else. I'm your host, DJ JC. If you're just joining us and you didn't hear the beginning part of the show, we have Mr. Rick Nahira, Deputy Chief for the Bronto Fire Department. Not only that, he is my best friend. So good morning, Rick. Hey, good morning, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, thank you, DJ JC, for <laughs> allowing me to be here. No, and thank you for taking time from your busy schedule. I know how busy you are. Why don't we hear about what you do, what your job? But, you know, as we were walking to the studio this morning, and as I walked out of the house, there was a sense that maybe fall is around the corner, right? It felt a little different. It felt a little cool. It felt a little cool it today. Did. Low humidity. That's what we want. That's but it's beginning want. to get warm. So the current temperature is 88, and this whole weekend we're going to see this these high temperatures. So uh, I'm sure it's going to be a great weekend. Weather's going to be great, and just just enjoy it. So just a little bit of background about how you and I know each other, uh, and I honestly want to get to to so many things about your job and about what you do. And and as with every show, we do have a research question, and we'll get to that in a bit. But uh, for the past couple of weeks, I've had some wonderful guests. I had a guest talking about financial literacy. Then we talked about careers and counseling. Then last week, we talked to, to, to one of my colleagues about the Twilight Zone television show. And I had told everybody, I, I, I gave everybody a heads up that it was going to be a really geeky show. It was going to be really nerdy. And it was, but it was great. So if that show was nerdy, if that show was geeky, this show is going to be hot it is going to be a hot yeah, show because like we're going to yeah, because we're going to talk about fire prevention. <laughs> so that's why. So you see what I did there? You yeah. saw the segue that's that I went segue. through. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it sounded good. That's comedy gold for library talk and everything else. So yeah. So the research question for today, uh, before we get to you, Rick, is um, I, I know you have so much knowledge about fire and fire science, and we want to get to that. But the research question that we're going to ask today is, what are some of the most effective community education strategies for improving fire safety awareness and prevention in residential areas? So I want to take a look at that. We use these reference questions and research questions as a guide for the show, as a way to kind of navigate. We answer it, we don't, but it's something to open up, and it's something to explore throughout the show. So just a quick background. You and I know each other because our families know each other from back in the day. We are neighbors. We were neighbors, excuse me. We hit it off as soon as we met. Our kids are great. They are about the same ages, and it has just been such a wonderful relationship. I mean, we once a month, go to lunch, and this weekend we got to hang out together. So it's it's been great. So please tell us a little bit about your background, where you're coming from, and how you uh, got to this. Because when I met you back in 2004, I remember you had just started your career as a firefighter. Is that correct? No, actually, um, 2004 was when we had our first child, Ricky Jr. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. I didn't join the fire service till 20, uh, 2006. 2006, okay. So when yeah. I met you, you were still doing other things, and then you ultimately became a exactly. firefighter. And I remember when you came, uh, when, when you became a firefighter, there was an article written about you in the paper, and I want to explore that because... Wow. That was, that was <laughs> quite a bit ago, man. Yes. Uh, you're bringing up a lot of... <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. Well, the reason I bring that up, Rick, the reason I bring up that, that newspaper article is because you prominently had it in your garage and you were really proud of all the other right. firefighter yeah. uh, things that you have promoted and, and you take so much pride in, in, your, in your job. But the reason I think that article was written was because it was a generational thing, right? Right. So I want you to talk about that. Yeah, so the way that came about, uh, I, had, I was a pro B firefighter. I was um, doing some stuff around the, the firehouse when the Brownsville Herald walked in and they were like, hey, we want to do an article about, you know, something fire-related. And it, as a joke, one of the lieutenants at the time was like, well, you can interview my probie here. Uh, he's got a lot of experience. And he kind of made a joke about it, right? Okay. And I was like, yeah, I can talk about whatever you want. And they were like, yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself. So as they started asking me questions, they were kind of interested in mm -hmm. the story because, yeah, it's the way you brought it up. Um, so myself, I'm a third generation firefighter. My grandpa climbed up the ranks and he became an assistant chief. He retired as an assistant chief. Uh, my father was, uh, he climbed the ranks. He also was a fire chief at one point. Um, myself, I've climbed the ranks. I moved up to deputy fire chief and now my son, Ricky Jr. Yes. Uh, he just turned 20 in April. 
and he's a fourth generation firefighter. Yeah, the first fourth generation firefighter we have in Brownsville. Wow, that is amazing. You know, I've known Ricky since he was young, and I am so proud of him. And and you too, Rick. You know, I followed your career from, like I said, from when you started and now where you're at, and just proud of you. And honestly, I appreciate man, that. It, yeah, it, thank you. Great. So thank you. Yeah, so that's the way it was on and that article. Uh, believe it or not, towards the end of that article, because I still have it, right? I'm yes. proud of it, like you said. And towards the end of the article, it does talk about how Ricky might become a fourth-generation firefighter. And look, it, and it, it came, came to, to pass. pass. Yeah. Yes, it came to pass. Yeah. So that's great. You know, um, the whole family involved in this, and you do have a wonderful family. I've Appreciate had the, that. Thank the, you. the privilege of, of getting to know everybody. And so so thank you so much for welcoming us as part of that as well. So, so. Fire Prevention Week, and that's one of the reasons I asked you to come here was yeah. to was yeah. to talk about that and talk about some of the community engagement that you do to you know promote um, Fire Prevention Week. And so I went down a rabbit hole, which I always do as a librarian. I want to go down <laughs> and I start doing my research and I start getting lost in it. But a couple of things here about Fire Prevention Week is that it is a nationally observed week in the United States and Canada from Sunday to Saturday, uh, which is whenever the week of October 9th falls. And this is to commemorate the Great Chicago Fire that started in the late hours of October 8th. Uh, and the location of those, of that, the origin, the location of the origins of that fire are now uh, the Chicago Fire Academy. So whether that was just wonderful city planning or whether that was just uh, ironic, uh, it is, you know, that now that location has been identified. And, and the fire, you know, it killed, according to records, it killed about about 300 people, destroyed about three square miles of, of, of property, 17,000 structures, uh, and left more than 100,000 residents homeless in 1871. So I'm sure fire science has come a long way since then. Yeah. But, um, but we talk about readiness. And so I want to go back to that question about, you know, Fire Prevention Week, what do you do as a department to promote this, because uh, I've seen you guys at the schools. I've seen you guys yeah. at the elementaries. No, so that evolved. Fire Prevention Week evolved from Fire Prevention Week to Fire Prevention Month. Great. Because, yeah, we have so many schools in Brownsville, as, as do, you know, other cities and other mun municipalities. So Fire Prevention Month, we, we usually mark out that whole month for visiting the schools and teaching about fire safety and smoke alarms. So... Going back to your research question, <laughs> right? If you want to pose that, I, I, I do. I do. Yeah. That's that's the question that I wanted to use as our guide for this particular show. Yeah. So you're asking what's the most effective, yes. right? Um, com community education strategies for for residential fires, and and really the number one thing is educating the public on smoke alarms. Okay. I mean, we talk about it from when we go visit, you know, elementary students at kindergarten. Yes. Sometimes even th that little, we t we talk to them. And we promote smoke alarms. Smoke alarms actually save lives. And this Fire Prevention Week or the Fire Prevention Month, that is the, um, the mantra of, of this, uh, this October, right? Yes. So we want to promote smoke alarms. The smoke alarms save lives. And, you know, just making sure that those smoke alarms work um, biannually. So you want to check those. Obviously, the way we do it is we check them at uh, when the time changes, the daylight oh, okay. saving time. That's, that's a good, a good way to, uh -huh. yeah, that's a good way to do it. So you want to make sure you test them, change out the batteries, even if they don't need to be changed. Change them out anyway, right? Uh, you want to make sure you do things like that. You want to teach escape plans in the house. And a good way to, the acronym that we use is EDITH. Okay. Yeah, E D. I-T-H, so okay. exit drills in the home. Okay. We, that's what we, what we teach you know, school-age children. Uh, so you want to make sure that you go home. I mean, obviously, our, our audience is not right children, <laughs> right? Exactly. It's, it's, it's um, college-age students. Yes. So you want to make sure that you practice those, those uh, exit drills in the home. Uh, if there's a fire, where to, where, where to escape to, who are you going to call, um, you know, what are you going to go to a neighbor's house? Call that, but we always like to pick a, a landmark across the street from our from our home. When, okay. when I was teaching this to my kids growing up, uh, this is a tree we're going to go to. This is the you know fence post we're going to go to, and make sure everybody's there because you want to make sure everybody's yes. accounted for, right? And um, obviously, you want to call nine one one. And then what we 
usually do is we hold community events. Um, I want to just stick a plug real quick. By all means, yeah. that's what we're here for. So we got, we're going to be having Firefest this Sunday at the sports park from 5 to 8 p.m. And that's just basically knowing your fire department. We're going to have uh, fireworks. We're going to have games. We're going to have food, things like that. So feel free if you're you know, out there, if you don't have anything to do Sunday from 5 to 8. That was actually postponed. We were supposed to have it Saturday, but the weather and all that didn't permit. So we're going to be having it this Sunday from 5 to 8 at the Brownsville Sports Park. So if anybody's in town wants a free event, feel yeah. free to go by and meet meet the the fire service that's in your community. That's great. And it's called Firefest? It's called Firefest. Yeah. Love the alliteration. Yeah. yeah, you like that? <laughs> you like that? Yeah. One of the things that and today's the last day, uh one of the things that we promote for smoke alarms is we teamed up with Domino's Pizza and during this week we were going out them if anybody called for a delivery, we would go with them. Really? Yeah, we would talk to the occupants of the residence and we would tell them, "Hey, uh, do you mind if we come in? We're from the Brownsville Fire Department. We're here to check your smoke alarm. Uh, some refused, right? I, I was going to say, yeah. so yeah. you order a pizza and all of a sudden the fire department All of a sudden you get the fire department. Yeah, like, that's, that's cool, right? I know the pizza was hot, but not that hot. Oh. I'm just kidding. That's Sorry, cool. again. This is this is as funny as it's going to get on library talk and everything else. Yeah, so we we show up, and, and if they if they accept, we go, we check their smoke alarm. If it's working, we give them a voucher for two free medium pizzas. That is pizzas. great. Yeah. Man. Today's the last day, so want to plug this too. Also, um, the the one we partnered up with today is the one in Olmito. Oh, okay. So if for any reason Which you live the out new there, one. yeah, the new one. If you live out there, we're going to be going out there also uh, in the afternoon um, from five to seven. And if you accept, you might get two free. Uh, vouchers hey, for that's great. medium pieces. You know, this, a lot of our listeners are both on the Edinburgh campus and here, and I'm sure, you know, with certainty that, you know, the Edinburgh Fire Department is also conducting all sorts of community relations yeah. to promote this. So Edinburgh, Edinburgh has a volunteer fire department. I think it's combination now, but they, they have a robust uh, fire service. They're, they're really well known in the Valley. That's great. Uh, Chief Sean Snyder, who passed away uh, he, uh, recently, you know, that he was, he wanted to make sure that we, that they had all the state of the art equipment. And, you know, he was, he was a really good, you know, uh, fire chief for the Valley, but yeah, they, they have a robust fire service and I'm sure that they're doing everything they can out there to, for the, for fire, fire prevention month. Right. But yeah, those, those are one of the, some of the things that we do to promote fire safety. You know, we, we do escape plans. We team up with the community. And anywhere we can find ways to promote uh, fire prevention. And that's one of the things, you know, I remember my daughters coming home during that week, and they were all excited about, you know, I think they got, like, a, a sticker that was a badge, and they had, uh, you know, they came talking about that. And I think it's something we need to continue, not just elementary, you know, because they come in with this excitement about, oh, dad, we learned about this. And the firefighters came in and, and then you're right, you plan escape routes. But then you're like, eh, OK, so I think it is a continual thing that you need to. I mean, uh, yeah, if you love practice. your family, if you love your family, you're going to want to do this. I mean, we talk about material things all the time that they can be replaced and, you know, no, nothing can replace a life. Right. So. If you love your family, you're obviously going to want to teach them about fire safety as well as other stuff, right? I mean, yes. other natural disasters, you know. Hurricane. Which which I want to talk about, and I'll, we'll talk about a little after the break. And this is just such a fas fascinating topic. And honestly, thank you for being here. Because this week, Hurricane Milton went through Florida. And uh, I want to talk about how we ready ourselves before that and what we do after a disaster like that. But... You know, you mentioned the community engagement, and I think it is so important that the community become involved and that the community be part of these, you know, drills and part of, you know, this exercise in safety because one of the things that a lot of people, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I know you're my friend and all, and I tell you. Come on, man, tell it. No, no. Be real, be real, come on. <laughs> no, like I'm never invested into a fire extinguisher. You know, yeah. at home. And, and that's one what? thing that's like, ah, no, nah, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. I don't need one. And I know last time we were hanging out, I asked you, hey, which is the best fire extinguisher? that you're like, A, B, C, D, or whatever the, the, the codes were. And I'm like, what do those mean? But it's not something that a lot of us, at least not 
that I know, it's like, oh, we have a fire extinguisher. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so it's such a, I mean, it's a very essential item to have, but a lot of people don't invest in it because they think, oh, it, it'll never happen to me, right? Um, my wife will attest to this. Uh, we have a fire extinguisher under our uh, uh, kitchen sink, right? Yeah. We have our fire extinguisher there, and it's an ABC fire <laughs> extinguisher, okay? okay. <laughs> yeah. So ABC, what that just basically means is that it'll extinguish all ordinary combustibles. It'll extinguish liquid fires. It'll re it'll extinguish uh, electricity fires. So that's basically what an ABC extinguisher means, and that's such an essential item to have. Keep one under the sink in your kitchen because normally, well, basically what happens is that you have a kitchen fire. That's usually where it'll it'll start. Other than smoking in bed, which you never want to you <laughs> you never want to do that. You never want to obviously want to stay away from smoking. Period. Right. But um, other than kitchen fires, I, I mean, you you want to keep a fire extinguisher there, and you you also want to keep one in your car. I mean, it's a great place to to keep one. You never know what you're gonna run into. You never know what you're going to roll up on, right? So, you know, I have one in my unit, uh, obviously, and, and I have one in my house. But, yeah, ABC fire extinguisher, they're very inexpensive. You can go down to the Walmart, mm -hmm. buy something like that, and, and keep it. You never know what, what's going to happen. And when you start thinking, no, it'll never happen to me. It'll never happen to me. You, you start getting complacent. Yes. You know, and then you start getting, oh, you know, you. we always go to – smoke in the residence and somebody left a pot on the on the stove they yeah. went and fell asleep they didn't yes. even you know remember that they had something on the stove like that so you know that whole it'll never happen to me or it'll never happen here you know you you want to get away from that complacency so you know we see a fire for us that are <laughs> lay persons when it comes to you know uh, an inferno of some kind and we stay away <laughs> inferno, or uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. that's, that's that's huge right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so you know we see a fire right and obviously our our we rubberneck man you know we want to hey an accident no, we see that. Not. <laughs> no. <laughs> not me especially not me but we we rubberneck and we're like what happened there you know we see an accident we see you guys involved and and we like oh what just happened there we met the chones right <laughs> and I, I know for myself right and so, <laughs> and i know you guys listening especially my friends are like yep that's what <laughs> right yeah, no for sure they, they, people so want to know what we want to know what happened but there are a lot of misconceptions, and I'll go back to something that uh, you and I were talking about last time we were hanging out, was that I saw a car on fire. Right. I saw a, a vehicle on fire. Bla I mean, it was in on fire, right? It was in a parking lot, and it was just, yeah. The, and so some of the individuals that were there, they started getting fire extinguishers, and they started, and everybody was like, no, 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 wait, wait, the car's going to explode. The car's going to blow up, explode. <laughs> and then... We see it in movies. You know, we see the fact that these, these cars are going to explode if they, when it re reaches the gas tank. So everybody's yelling at these guys and they're like, wait, no, no, don't go, don't go out yeah, there. No, for it's sure, going sure. to gonna, it's gonna blow up. And these guys went out there. I don't know what their thought was other than, hey, you know, we need to somehow help out. Luckily, no one was in the car. It was just in, in the parking lot. But we were all freaking out. But yet, we were out there. If it was it gonna explode, <laughs> we were recording it with our phones. Oh, of course. We're of recording course. it with our phones yeah, for there's some, safety. There's some individuals that, you know, I need to get this on camera before I call nine one one or I before I, you know, jump into action or and obviously, you know, leave it up to the professionals, right? Like yeah, if, exactly. if you if it's um a fire in its initial stages that you feel that a fire extinguisher will put out, then, yeah, by all means, go ahead. But we never want to have somebody get injured for something that can be replaced, mm -hmm. right, especially a civilian. If that car is insured and, you know, things like that, just let it let, – let the fire department get there and put it out. But going back to your question about it exploding, <laughs> yeah, that, that'll that probably never happen. It's so <laughs> rare. I mean, and I can give you a little bit of science. Uh, my geekiness will come yes, out here. Yes, yes, by all means. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we got to remember that <clears throat> gasoline, the liquid doesn't burn. What, what burns is the vapors oh, coming okay, okay. out of the liquid, okay. right? So even if, let's just, and I, I've been to car fires several, you know, times where the gas tank is or the gasoline tank is ruptured right um 
let me let me just go back. Yeah. Anytime we watch movies like that, mm-hmm. and, and, and they walk away, yeah, and the car explodes yeah, behind them, and they're, exactly. they're doing the slow walk. No, I, I just wanted to say, anytime we go to like we watch a movie like that, and it has to do because I'm a paramedic too. I, I I don't know, I didn't say that also, but yeah, I'm a paramedic also. So anytime we watch movies, either medically related or you know they go in there and the doctors are yeah shock him and you know this <laughs> yeah. and that, I'll lean over to my wife right, and I'll say, and my poor wife, like I'll lean over to her and I'll say. Yeah, they. That's not gonna happen. They're, you don't shock that rhythm, and, you know, and all. And she's like, oh, "Can you just watch the movie? Like, it's for entertainment, right?" Well, Rick, do you remember one time we were watching Transformers at your house, and oh, yeah. you were like nitpicking, yeah. like that? I'm like, "Really, Rick? That's what you? There's forget about the robots that are destroying." Yeah, I'm sure, the our city. wives were like, oh, "Guys, we just, just watch, watch the, movie. the movie." Yeah, and it makes for great entertainment. A car blowing up. Yeah. I mean, and walking away slowly. Walking away. So yeah, just just to tell you a little bit how that works is. Uh, gasoline is not uh, explosive okay. in nature, right? Gasoline vapors are Vapor. what ignite. So if the gasoline tank were to rupture, mm-hmm. basically all it's going to do is just promote more fire, okay. right? And it's just going to be spilling. The fire will catch on to those vapors, and wherever that gasoline goes, and that's it's easy. going down the gutter or whatever, that's where that fire is going to go, right? Mm-hmm. But Mainly the most that you'll get out of a car fire, and this is pretty scary, is the tires will explode. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. basically it. Now, obviously, s- having said that, I don't want everybody to be running into car <laughs> fires, right, and, and trying to extinguish it. Because you'll be oh, okay. Yeah. Just the tires are the only thing. Rick <laughs> said, it's not going to explode. I'm going to be all right. No, no, no. We, we leave it up to the professionals. Yes, and, exactly. And, and you did arrive the... the the, the fire department did arrive and took care of it, but it yeah. was... The, the other thing is that there's really no pressure buildup. Mm-hmm. Like, we won't see an explosion. It, it, there's got to be some compressed gas, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I'm we can go down this rabbit hole yeah, of yeah. blevy and what that means and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, um, gasoline is not explosive. Mm-hmm. It's flammable, and you won't see a huge explosion. Uh, we've We've, I mean hundreds of car fires and you know we're there the the vehicle's fully involved which i'm i'm sure you saw it like was, it, it looks was, pretty menacing right it was like, scary yes yeah and there's like tons of black smoke and all yeah. this uh, other stuff but yeah for the most part it's going to be fully involved or fully engulfed we call it and there won't be a an actual explosion okay. we'll just go we'll put it out um there's times where we're actually putting you know uh fire extinguisher into the gas tank because it's just spilling so much yeah. so much liquid right but yeah that that'll never happen so all right well you were safe well thank you so much i, I was at a distance recording relatively but speaking, at a distance yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much again rick for all that it, this is just such a wonderful conversation and the time just goes by so fast you know i have had so many wonderful guests and i'm always looking at the time and i'm thinking oh my goodness i wish i had more time to talk to them so we're going to come back and talk a little bit about hurricanes uh you know people in florida that are struggling with this right now you know we're thinking about them and just I want to know what we do to prepare. Obviously, we can't change it if it's heading our way, but what can we do to better prepare? So we're going to take a music break right now. And by by, by chance, I just see the song Fireball. So we're going to choose that oh, wow. as our that's song. A, so thank you so much again for joining us here on Library Talk and everything else. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Man, I'm already thinking way ahead. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much again for joining us for Library Talk and everything else, the show that talks about anything and everything with a library component behind it. And we have my best friend, Mr. Rick Nakeda from the fire department here. And I want to mention that if you're having some difficulty listening to the show, maybe you could hear it at the beginning, but maybe you need to step away. All shows are ultimately uploaded to the UTRGV Vaquero Radio YouTube channel. So I want to thank Student Media for their assistance with uploading those videos. We have so many other shows that you can listen to, and we are in our about fifth week of our show here, Library Talk. And so as soon as those are uploaded, we'd love for you to follow us. We'd love for you to support the show. And thank you if you're a listener from the very beginning, thank you so much for continuing to allow us to spend your Thursday morning with us. If you just discovered the show, awesome. And I really appreciate you being here as well. So we're going to continue with our conversation here with Mr. Nahira. Again, he is the deputy chief for the Brownsville Fire Department. We've been having a wonderful conversation about community relations between um, 
what is supposed to, you know, be out there to prep, what we can do to get ourselves ready. But as we're going into the break, we mentioned Hurricane Milton. And, you know, I kept watching video and I was so just intrigued at, at this 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 mother nature's just power and it's something that we cannot i mean discount because it, it is a it's so massive of a of a storm as it was hitting florida and so i know you in preparation and your department and the community and the city you, we we have to ready ourselves and you guys do a wonderful job of getting us ready and prepared now do we listen maybe not all the time but i want to ask you about that you know i want you to Put yourself in a situation where the storm is coming to Bronx, so the storm is heading our way. What do we need to do? Yeah, so, I mean, our thoughts and prayers go out to yes. those individuals in Florida, right? I mean, a Category 3, that's that's a devastating hurricane. Yes. I mean, if, if we look at it, I just want to just, I guess I, I'll put it into perspective a little bit. So the National Weather Service, what they, what they or the Hurricane Center, what they do is, they have created different categories. And for those of you that don't know, we hear it all the time, right? Yes. But what does it really mean? Yeah, exactly. Right? Category one, category five, or whatever. So, I mean, just to put it in per- into perspective, category one are, are wind speeds from 74 miles per hour to 95 miles per hour. Category two is from 96 to 110. Category three, which is what it made landfall mm-hmm. uh, when it hit Florida, was 111 to 129. So you can; those were the wind speeds, you know, when it when it came when it made landfall. Category four, one thirty, one fifty six, and then anything above one fifty seven is category five. So it was a category five. If, it if was you, yes, yeah. and they were projecting and predicting that when it was going to hit, it was going right. to be a five. Yeah. So when it when it hits that warm water in the Gulf, I mean, th- that's when that thing is well defined and strengthened, and I mean, it was barreling. I think it it made landfall. And it was traveling at 15 to 20 miles per hour or something like that. But, yeah, just to put it in perspective, it hit at, a, at 111 to 129 miles per hour. And we just want to make sure that, I mean, we're so prone to it here yes, in Brownsville and the, the area we live in. I mean, we're right here in the Gulf of Mexico, right? So, I mean, number one, we want to make sure that when there is an order to evacuate, to evacuate, right? I mean, that's we talked about material things and we talked about how lives can be replaced, but that's why you have insurance on your home. That's why you have insurance on your things because those things can be replaced. You know, you build it up again, but your family, you can't replace that. Yeah. So if there is an order to evacuate, just just evacuate, listen to the authorities, evacuate, call up a, a family member, you know, even if you have to stay at a hotel or something further inland, you know, a lot of people go to San Antonio, Austin, j- just to get away from the coast, you know storm surge and all that you want to make sure you do that but before you do that you want to talk to your family about the importance of evacuating the importance of uh, developing a jump bag or or a go bag whatever you want to call it but just what that bag is just basically essential items you want to do like hand sanitizer soap sanitary things that that you need uh, for travel Basically, like if you're traveling just for grab and go, grab and go. Yeah. But you want to make sure that you, a lot of people don't understand this. You want to make sure you make one for each individual person, one person doing it for everybody. You know, that's not going to work. You want to make sure you have at least that those items for each individual person, as well as drinking water and and your things. pets, too. So Find that, that as well. So, yeah. And my wife would would I, I really have to. You know, my wife is a big animal lover, and she's she always has been, right? And and just yesterday, she was showing me this video that somebody left a dog tied up, oh, and they took man. off, oh. and this dog was like in his feet were like in water and oh. stuff. And I mean, come on, guys. We, I mean, animals. I mean, they're, they're part family, of the family. They're part, part of the family, family yes. right? So yes. So we want to make sure that you also. Talk to an animal shelter. Talk to those animal shelters and find out what you need to do to get that animal. But more than likely, th- I mean, you're going to – obviously, you want to yeah, take, take your, yeah. your, your pet with, with you, right? Yeah. So make sure you, you do that. Um, practice your – 